welcome to this week's show. Uh, this week, all about King Arthur. Uh, and was he real or not? That's the question that all, everyone's always going on about him. Uh, yeah, King Arthur. But first of all, the competition details. The competition is all about your secret of handshake. I want to see your secret of handshake. Uh, preferably with another person. It's a little difficult to do it yourself like that, you know, and all that. So get together with someone else and do it a video. It has to be at least one minute long. And um, the winner will win this prize called The Princes of Florence, a board game. <coughs> the strategy game of patrons, artists, and scholars. There you go, that's what you can win. Uh, say, by the end of next month, by the end of April, whoever has the best rating, right, so everyone else can rate your video, will win that board game. And, yeah, so, get on, get on to it, make a video up, doing your secret handshake. Anyway, this week, uh, all about King Arthur. And the question, of course, always posed about King Arthur is, was he real? Well, this question always uh, plagued him, even, actually, right back to when he was born. When he was born, he came out, and his parents took one look at him, and then they said, um, well, he doesn't look that real, does he? You know, something funny about it, I don't know. And then when he was at school, you know, all the kids used to tease him. Um, saying he had a fake personality and they used to pinch him to see if he was real, see if he'd squeal, you see and he used to do it himself, he used to go home, look in the mirror and he'd pull his hair to see if it hurt pinch himself and yeah, and, yeah, and at school in school photos um, everyone used to say to him come on Arthur, show us your fake smile so he grew up with this rather um, strange uh, personality complex about whether he was real or not. And um, it was kind of sad, really, and I think perhaps that's why he went out there and made such a mark on the world. Um, for example, at the ba Battle of Baden, he supposedly killed 960 men, all by himself. And I think in one um, battle he, had, he supposedly had a cross on his back whilst fighting with his magic sword. Now, speaking of his magic sword, um, when at home, you know, when he was young and everything, he had this little magic sword, and his mother, she used to like playing tricks on him, so she'd hide the sword all around the house, you know, and he would dash around, he always dash, he'd never walk anywhere, you know, because as the history books tell us, he was a dashing young man, so he would, you know, he would dash, for example, he wanted a cup of tea or something, he would dash into the kitchen, he wouldn't walk, and he would dash to the broom cupboard to look for his magic sword. And then it wasn't there, so he'd dash uh, into the pantry. And he'd look in through the pantry, it wasn't there either. So he'd dash to the outside toilet. That was long ago, so they had toilets outside by then. Dash outside, had a look at the toilet. It's not in there either. Where is it? And then once he came across it, around behind the outside toilet. And yes, there it was. Um, however, it was in a stone. And he was rather cheesed off, of course, as you would be. Um, in a stone. How on the earth did it get in a stone, he thought. And um, his mother came out and he said, Mum, what have you done? This is my magic sword, you realise, and you put it in a stone. But, of course, as we well know, he pulled the stone out. Well, I don't know if he pulled the stone out, but he certainly pulled the sword out of the stone. And then his mother, who had spent two weeks putting the sword in the stone, gave him a hiding, there and then, with the back of the sword. Only the back of it. She didn't cut him or anything like that. And, um, yeah, so it was an interesting time growing up with his mischievous mother like that. Um, but, you know, back in those times, because that was in the time when the Roman Empire was collapsing in Europe, uh, between 410 and 450, all over Europe, the Roman Empire basically withdrew to Rome. And in Great Britain, around 406 um, through to 407, the, the Roman legions pulled out of Great Britain, and the Saxon hordes turned up, right? And they turned up, they were the barbarians, you see. They were not quite as sophisticated as the Romans or anything. And the Britons made jokes about them, you know, um, why don't you use a knife and fork like all the rest of us, and things like that, of course. 
Um, don't even use a napkin, you know. All the usual jokes that you make. But they were the victors, weren't they? They were the ones winning the battles. The uh, Britons kind of lost, so they didn't write so much down. That's why we don't know that much about King Arthur, apart from what I've told you already, you know, with his mother and all that, of course. Um, so, you know, they generally kept quiet. British um, journalists wrote very little down. Um, why don't you, get, you know, it's like, why don't you get this down, Bob? Why don't you get that down, Charlie? Um, look, we lost. It's as simple as that, cheesehead. Um, why write down something that's just bloody embarrassing? I'd sooner, you know, so there's very little written down about Britons uh, at all. But there you go. Camelot, the big castle that um, everyone goes on about. You know. um, well, that had the famous round table. But, you know, it didn't start off with the round table, did it? It started off with a rectangular table. And there was fights all the time between the knights of the round table, well, it was of well, the rectangular table back then, of who would sit at the head of the table, you see? So they used to play, for example, musical chairs. And Arthur would have the, you know, the... Um, He'd be playing the music, but didn't have the tape recorder back then. So he'd be playing the fiddle or whatever, you know. And he'd stop, and they'd, like, make a beeline for the top of the table. And there'd be broken stools everywhere, so they had to give up that. So then they thought, well, we'll design a different shaped table. And um, they came up with all these different shapes. For example, triangular, but then ended up with only three people getting a seat, of course. And star shape which wasn't very effective either, because um, everyone keep ripping their trousers on the corners, you know. So they ended up with the uh, round table. However, that was um, took two years to make. A year to work out how to make it, and then two years to saw it. So there you go. That's this week's show, all about King Arthur and the competition details. Thanks a lot. Please rate my video. Great to see you. Thanks a lot. And even better, subscribe. See you next week. Bye.